Hi, how are we doing everybody? Welcome to Russell Heritage Golf. Today we are talking about the golf swing in slow motion. So we're going to be using some snapshots of professional golf swings coming up in today's video as well. I'm going to kind of break the golf swing down into those key areas to kind of talk about what should be basically happening. The first thing to understand would be the grip. Okay, the grip. The idea is, is that you hold the club in the fingers and you get the heel pad sitting on top. A grip which would be suffice is to the point where you can create a wrist cocking motion. Now the first thing to understand about the grip is that this is your utter priority because this is the fastest mechanism in the golf swing is the ability to create wrist cock and to down cock. The reason why professional golf swings look different and the reason why some of your mates might look different is that the more you grip it in the fingers will change the angulation between the shaft and the lead arm so it might change your posture. But also, the stronger that you hold the club turns the arm, your lead arm more over in this manner, as opposed to the weaker you grip the club, the more the rotation of the arm goes in this manner. The reality is, it doesn't matter. As long as you can create wrist cock, the important thing to understand is however you hold the club in terms of the orientation, in terms of how much you go in the fingers or more towards your palm, and the more that you rotate your arm over one way or another, will just change how your backswing looks. So the important thing to understand is that however you grip the club will make it look a certain way at the top of the backswing position. That's what we'll come to a little bit later. Aside from that, one of the consistencies that we tend to see amongst most professional golfers, which is kind of deemed as the most orthodox approach, is to bend from the hips, feel like you're getting your spine angle roughly sort of perpendicular towards the shaft angle as a feeling. And then from there, once you hold the golf club, you'll normally find that the shaft of the golf club will point towards the belt buckle. Now there are occasions where some golfers will swing on a more single axis, but the reality is the majority don't do that. So what we tend to see next is the takeaway. In the takeaway, what needs to happen is that again, once you've got your major decision on the hold of the golf club, the first move to take the club back is going to be a hinging mechanism on the back of the right hand or your trail hand and an element of cocking on the lead hand. Now, both of these movements help the club stay on plane. Now, if you're uncertain as to what this means, as long as the shaft of the golf club is pointing down towards your ball to target line, basically means the club is on plane. Now, one of the differences that we see with most professional golfers is relative to how the hands are performing. So some professionals have their hands working further away from their body, like we can see here in this example, and some professionals have their hands much closer towards their body. But one of the things that we can see with all of these professional golfers is regardless as to where the hands are orientated, the shaft of the golf club still points down towards your ball to target line. So the important thing to understand about the takeaway is understand the concept of plane and keep the shaft pointing down there regardless as to how your hands necessarily function. Now, the backswing position. What we see as we've got proven data from things like force plate data in terms of we can see how the professional golfers distribute their weight is that in the backswing position, golfers put say 70 plus weight goes underneath that trail leg in the backswing position. It's a really important feature in the backswing is that you get the weight underneath the right hand side and I tend to think that most amateur golfers underestimate how much you need to be able to move in that position. So that's one of the common themes that we tend to see. The way that you do this therefore is obviously turning the hips and turning your shoulders and what we would tend to see is that the right leg will stay pretty flexed with the majority of tour pros. It's only the ones that create an excessive amount of hip rotation where the leg would start to straighten but really you wanna kind of feel like you're pushing weight underneath that trail leg to feel like you are pushing pressure in towards the floor. Again, the backswing position now, well, you can be anywhere you basically wanna be, right? Your arm can be high, your arm can be flat. You can have an element of the same angulation that you started with in your grip or your wrist could be slightly flatter. I'm not too concerned about this. I think that the third thing that all professional golfers share in common is not that they're all on a certain arm length or the elbow is in a certain position, because we know that's not true. But what we do know with all professional golfers is that they all put pressure underneath that trail leg, but in a rotational manner, not a sliding manner. So if you're a little bit uncertain as to what you're trying to do in your backswing, that should be your main focus. 
Now, the next move that we tend to see is what's known as the transition. So the transition is this initiation in towards the downswing. Now, again, there are variety and there are differences. One of the common things that we tend to see with professional golfers though is by the time the lead arm comes back down to a horizontal position in the golf swing, the pelvis is already square towards target, which basically means that if I've turned my hips 50 degrees worth of rotation in the back swing, obviously I've got my pelvis back to parallel towards my target by the time my lead arm is horizontal placed. So what we know therefore is that in the downswing is that as we trigger a rotational movement of the body, so my hips, should we say my torso and my shoulders, as I start to turn, you can see the way my shoulder starts to work in space towards the target, and that is what pulls my arm down. So the common thing that we see with professional golfers is by left arm horizontal, the pelvis is parallel. And if you know in your golf swing that you're not doing that, that's because you're not initiating your golf swing in a rotational manner. You are pulling the club down or excessively sliding, which is going to upset your ability to sequence that golf swing correctly. Once they transition correctly, obviously again, different golf pros look slightly differently. Some of them are more shallow in terms of where the shaft angle is facing. Some of them really drive the elbow. Some of the elbow gets more towards the right hip. But what we know is that the shaft angle points again down towards our ball to target line, which basically means the club comes down on plane. What we also know is that by the time the club is parallel placed with a professional golfer, is that basically all the weight now is back on towards that lead side so they can't turn anymore which is why it triggers an extension so what we know with professional golfers is that the point of impact the lead leg would be more forward facing towards the target the shoulders would be open so pointing left relative towards the target line and what this will do is this will help you control that impact position if you're a golfer who knows that you're more this way coming in towards the impact then what you need to do is you need to go back through those checkpoints in the backswing and the transition, and that will give you the ability to open yourself up coming in towards the hit. Those are the common themes that we tend to see. What obviously changes is depending on how the golfer holds the club and depending on what sort of plane the golfer is swinging on, whether they're swinging their arms on a flatter arm plane or on a higher arm plane, and whether they transition with a lot of lower body rotation or they're a little bit quieter, or depending on how the club comes down, whether it's more here or on, again, the hands are closer to the body, will change how things look. But the reality of the situation is, is that coming in towards the downswing, the club shaft again needs to point back down towards that ball to target line, and you wanna be hitting the ball with the feeling of rotation. Therefore, the last point that we tend to see with all professional golfers, which makes it look so effortless, <coughs> is the finish position. What we'll see is that the ankle will always roll the reason why the ankle rolls is because otherwise it's impossible to get your right hip to move in front of your left hip coming into the through swing. We'll see the way the shoulders are either, shall we say, perpendicular to the target line or they surpass that slightly. And the club always looks like it finishes nice and balanced as we swing through. The key thing is that balanced finish position is going to give you much more consistency. Those are the things that we can learn from professional golfers. And that is the golf swing in slow motion and its pure simplicity of those focus areas. The important thing to understand is that the golf swing can look in different ways. But the reality is that functionality rules. So some of these basic things that I've highlighted today is to understand that, hang on a second, are you changing your swing just to make it look a certain way as opposed to making yourself function a little bit better? Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Always appreciate a thumbs up and a like. Remember, it's absolutely free to press that subscribe button. If you're going to do so, you might as well press that little bell icon because that means you'll receive notifications every time a new video comes out. Catch up with you soon.